Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Bhutan's king meets India's PM Modi and SA Doval to boost ties. Pakistan's top court rules provincial polls delay illegal orders voting. And Taliban says the world should prefer to engage with Islamic Emirates. And now for all the details. Bhutan's King Jigme Khesar Namgyal Wangchuk on Tuesday met India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi and held wide-ranging discussions to boost bilateral ties. King Wangchuk's visit is in keeping with the long-standing tradition of regular high-level exchanges between the two nations. In the meeting, it was agreed India would step up its support for Bhutan's upcoming 13th five-year plan. Early in the day, India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval also called on the King. He also met the country's President Draupadi Murbu. Bhutan is important to India because it acts as a buffer state between India and China. India has long been Bhutan's top trading partner and continues to be the primary source of investments and economic assistance for its socio-economic development. Meanwhile, India said on Tuesday it had rejected attempts by China to rename places in its Arunachal Pradesh a day after China's civil affairs ministry issued a list of Chinese names of 11 places in the eastern state. In a statement, India's foreign ministry spokesperson said Arunachal Pradesh is, has been and will always be an integral and inalienable part of India. The statement further said attempts to assign invented names will not alter the reality. This is the third time that China has renamed places in Arunachal Pradesh, which it calls the southern part of Tibet. India and Chinese troops had clashed along the line of actual control in Tawang sector of Arunachal Pradesh last December, in a face-off that came amid border standoff in eastern Ladakh, which has turned the relations sour between the two Asian supergiants since 2020. Pakistan's Supreme Court ruled on Tuesday that the Election Commission's decision to postpone polls for the Punjab and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa assemblies till October 8th was unconstitutional and fixed May 14th as the date for the polls. The court said that the poll body could not go beyond the 90-day stipulated time as per the constitution. Both the provinces were governed by loyalist former PM Imran Khan, who has been pushing for elections throughout the country since his ouster last year. Khan's key aide, PTI leader Fawad Chaudhary, hailed the top court's ruling. The poll body had delayed polls, citing a lack of resources. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif and his government had backed the election delay, saying it was not possible to organize elections while the country was struggling with an economic crisis. And moving on, there is anger and loathing among residents of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir as frequent power outages continue to disrupt their lives despite paying hefty bills, a report. Locals in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir have expressed anger over heavy taxes being levied for use of electricity despite facing unannounced daily load shedding for hours. They say there have been several protests, but authorities have continued to neglect the issue. A local said amid rising inflation, it has become difficult for them to bear such hefty bills. While Pakistan produces thousands of megawatts of electricity from various hydropower projects, people of the region do not receive a fair share. Locals blame Pakistan assured that Neelam Chelam and other hydropower projects will bring development and job opportunities. But they have only brought hours of load shedding, lack of drinking water, along with turning the roaring rivers into small rivulets or drains. 
Well, Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid has called on the international community to pursue engagement instead of putting pressure on the Islamic Emirate as it has been two years since the group came to power in Afghanistan. But no foreign governments have yet recognized its regime. Speaking to state-run media, Mujahid said that imposition of pressure and threats should be put aside so that they can take responsible actions regarding some issues some laws and other issues in the world. He also downplayed concerns over presence of Islamic State militant group in Afghanistan, terming it as propaganda. Taliban has barred women from education and put a ban on female NGO workers, which has drawn widespread international criticism. The Taliban says it respects women's rights in line with the interpretation of Islamic law and are working on guidelines to clarify the rules. And a massive fire raged through a shopping complex with 3,000 shops in Bangladesh's capital, Dhaka, early on Tuesday. There were no casualties reported till the last reports came in, but army personnel had been called in to help after flames spread rapidly in the cramped, crowded areas of Bang Bazaar, home to the country's famed cloth markets. A fire service official informed media that at least 50 fire units were working to douse the fire, the cause of which was not known immediately. Most of the shops were burned to ashes in the fire, destroying the goods shopkeepers had stocked up ahead of Eid. Lax regulations and poor enforcement have been blamed for industrial fires in the country that have in recent years led to hundreds of deaths. And Bhagwani Devi Tagar, a 95-year-old Indian athlete, received a grand welcome from fans and family members as she returned home on Tuesday after winning three gold medals in the 2023 World Masters Athletics Indoor Championships. Take a look. 95-year-old Indian athlete Bhagwani Devi Dagar received a warm welcome at New Delhi Airport on Tuesday as she returned home after winning three gold medals in the 2023 World Masters Athletics Indoor Championships in Poland. Proving that age is no barrier to achieve success, Bhagwani Devi reportedly won the medals in discus throw, shot put and 60-meter running in the championship. The non agenarian athlete said she plans to play and win more medals to make India proud. इस बार तीनों के तीनों गोल्ड लाकर इन्होंने तीनों मेडल के रंग बदले हैं और ये मेरे लिए मेरे परिवार के लिए पूरे देश के लिए गर्व का शंड है। Dagger, who hails from India's Haryana state, had won a gold medal in the 100 meter sprint and two bronze medals in other categories in the championship in Finland last year. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.